Uh, this is Pastor Bruce Wall live on the air here at the Boston Praise Radio and TV Network. And in the studio, I have Siddiqui Cambone, Executive Director of the Black, Black Community Information Center. I knew I was, you know, I was saying that today when I was coming down. I said, gee, that rolls right off your mouth so easy. You don't need a script. I said, I stopped to do it and I brought <laughs> Happens all the time. Okay, I wanted you to come in today because I wanted you to bring in your Welcome to Nubia's, Nubian Square sign so we can hang one up here in the studio. I want you to go back and, and tell those who know nothing about the campaign what's going on, what's Nubian Square, what are you, what are you in the community trying to do? Mm -hmm. Well, essentially, um, Pastor Wall, is that uh, the Black Community Information Center, you know, we're an all-volunteer organization. We have our own building up there in Warren Street called the Mining House, and we, you know, we, we take pride in the fact that uh, we, we try to set an example about being about folks uh, taking up the course of self-initiative, just like you've done here at Boston Praise Radio and TV. And so, uh, you know, we have a variety of things going on. You know, we, the tenants are there primarily, formerly homeless elders and folks with some uh, issue, you know, uh, mental health issues and what have you. Uh, you know, the Kwanzaa Committee is housed there. We do the Malcolm X Breakfast. We have a TV uh, show at BNN and Radio Northeast. And, of course, uh, I do the commentary here every every week at uh, Boston Praise Radio and TV. And so we've been involved in a lot of things, um, police use of deadly force issues and what have you. So one of our primary missions uh, through the years has been to uh, try and have various monuments of honor for folks who were former slave owners. So, for instance, uh, we led the effort uh, some years ago to have the former Washington Park in Roxbury renamed Malcolm X Park. And the same thing with uh, New Dudley Street and having it renamed Malcolm X Boulevard. So, for the last oh, over four years, our primary target has been uh, Dudley Square. And a lot of folks just weren't aware of the fact that the Dudley family, they were slave owners. And so, of course, you know, that whole phenomenon that's going on, going on now for the last couple of years about taking down monuments all across the country. And so uh, what's going on is that uh, we started the campaign. The first two years, we spent educating the community about the campaign and about the Dudleys because I know you know, Pastor Bruce, you just can't go out there and say, well, we need to change the name. So once we were able to get out there and address the community, we had some community meetings and what have you, and explain the reason why we wanted to change, uh, we actually started a petition campaign, and we've got over 3,000 signatures. And uh, what it is is that we now have a long list of endorsers and supporters of the uh, campaign for the new name change of Dudley Square to Nubian Square and also... Uh, we're lo looking to have the station renamed uh, Nubian Station because of the fact that a lot of folks don't know that the station comes under the jurisdiction of the Department of Transportation, you know, MBTA, and the square comes under the jurisdiction of the city of Boston. So we're simultaneously lobbying both of them. Uh, we're much further ahead, though, as it pertains to uh, having the square renamed. And I should I should mention the fact that what's really interesting about this is that when we first sat down with the city, they said, well, you know, um, you're setting a precedent here because there's never been an effort before in the history of the city to change the name of an entire commercial district. And so, you know, you might go into an area and there might be a plaque up in an area, a certain segment, but this is the first time ever that there's been an attempt of this nature. So, of course, uh, what has happened is that uh, a lot of momentum has been built up uh, through the months to the extent that uh, we now have, well, for the last several months now, it, we have the Nubian Square Coalition as a program of the Black Community Information Center because we've had so many folks come on board to the extent that now what's going on is that uh, we have folks either as individuals or organizations who are contacting us now and say, would you please put us on the list of supporters? So we're talking about uh, Boston Praise Radio and TV, uh, One United Bank, 12th Baptist Church, the various mosques in the city, 
uh, Garrison Trotter Neighborhood Association, Neighborhood Development Corporation, you know, just right, right across the board. So folks are saying, well, some of those organizations aren't in the immediate area. And we make it very clear that this is not a Roxbury issue. First of all, that uh, Dudley Square is our primary transportation portal. And they said not only do 40,000 folks come through there per day, but we all know that, <laughs> you know, in this community, we go to the square and we go to various locations throughout the community, whether it be from Mass Ave to Mattapan Square. So that's why uh, folks are feeling like this is like a community issue and not just for in the immediate area of Roxbury. And so where we stand right now is that, well, for the last year and a half, we've been negotiating with the city in terms of how we move forward with this whole process. So we sat down with uh, Public Improvement Commission representatives and also Neighborhood Services. And I should mention the fact that in the meetings has been myself, uh, Sister Jamada, Adab Kalak, uh, Smith of, of the Nubian Notion family, uh, Chuck Turner, uh, Dr. Reginald Jackson, other folks. And so we had actually gotten to the point where we were talking about having a community meeting, possibly at Hibernian Hall, mm -hmm. and then going before the Public Improvement Commission. Now, you know, that's the folks who make the final decision, mm -hmm. just like we had this, oh, the whole situation with Yaki Way. So what's really interesting is that once we'd come to that agreement, I, got, I was contacted by representatives for the city who were saying that Mayor Walsh should put the brakes on everything because he saw where it was going momentum-wise. And so what... Our position is that uh, he is the mayor of the city, and we are his constituency, and he has to, in fact, respect the will of the community and the people. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a matter of him dictating where this goes. He has to let the people make that decision. And so, of course, he's, the mayor is saying, you know, because I know everyone's talking about the Faneuil Hall situation, and he refuses to meet on it, and he says, no, he says, uh, we don't want to erase history. Well, the first thing I tell folks is that every morning in the mirror, <laughs> I see history. But the other piece, too, is that he was in support of taking down the name Yaki. You know, Thomas Yaki was a bigot. He was in support of taking down the name Yaki Way mm -hmm. and bringing back the old name Jersey. So, seemingly, if, in fact, you supported that, then you're mindset should be applicable to this situation and never mind this excuse about erasing history and so uh where we are right now is that um I, you know, i'm really pleased with the fact that uh mel king has agreed to be the uh honorary chair of mm -hmm. our nubian square campaign mm -hmm. so we're really pleased with that because you know we all know that mel is a community icon right and that if Mel is in support of something, then folks are saying it's got to be righteous. You know, right, it's that right, type of situation. Right, right, so we've right. got a lot of momentum going uh, right now. Uh, we're waiting to hear back from the mayor because, in fact, Mel King has a call into the mayor because, you know, they, they pretty much communicate on a regular basis saying, you know, this meeting that Sadiq and others are requ uh, requesting with you should happen ASAP. <laughs> and the other thing that we've told them, uh, Pastor Wall, is... Um, that based on where we are is that when we have this meeting, we don't want the mayor and his people to come in there and say, well, look, we set up some standards in terms of how we can move through this process. Mm -hmm. Our position is that seeing as how there are no standards and we'd reached an agreement about moving forward with the community meeting and then going before public improvement, that you respect that agreement. Now, if there's any effort of this nature in the future, then the standards that you possibly come up with would be applicable to that situation in the future, but not to ours, because we know full well that they're going to try and find, you know, different types of uh, roadblocks to keep this from moving forward, because they see the reality of this is, this is happening. And people are saying, well, uh, there are some folks who are saying, well, you know, what's, what's in the name? It's symbolic. And we're saying it's much more than that. First of all, we said that uh, we want to take down the name of a slave-owning family that's uh, being honored in our primary commercial shopping district. Number two, it's a partial tribute to the former Anubian notion that served our community for 50 years. And also, and most importantly, is that we want to send a message to the forces of gentrification that you know what, that we as black, brown, and brown people uh, intend to fight to retain the land 
in the space that we reside on at the present time. And so uh, in talking to folks, because you, you, you know, uh, Pastor Wald, you're always hearing folks talk about Dudley and drugs and and crime. That's, you know, that's all you ever hear about Dudley. And in fact, they had something recently out there. I don't know if you saw it on on um, uh, the Internet of a, of, a, of a sexual act that was being committed right down there in the square in the evening. You know, that, so that's, you know, so that's the type of piece that is going on in terms of the image of, of uh, Dudley Square. Mm. And, you know, you have folks who uh, congregate down there, because I actually stopped by B2 one day and said, can't you, uh, in fact, uh, have folks not just uh, hang out down there, because who wants to bring their family down to a location where you got to walk through people who aren't necessarily <laughs> conducting themselves in the appropriate fashion? And so we know that uh, Commissioner Gross has said, well, loitering is not a crime. So we understand that, but then at the same time, you can tell people to move along. So we believe that with the new name of Nubian Square, that there'll be a, a, a connection for folks and a sign of pride that, you know what, uh, the Nubian Square, this is ours. We're going to shop there. We're not going to run out to the suburbs to spend our money, and we're going to play a role as it pertains to seeing to it that it is a center of pride for our community versus what we're seeing, what's being stated right now. So uh, we're feeling very good about it. And, and what's really important from my perspective is that young people are really enthusiastic about it. <laughs> and we're trying to set an example for them because, you know, you know, Pastor Wall, I'm a grandfather. So I'm hopeful that uh, young folks are going to say, you know what, we're going to have Nubian Square, but then we're going to go after Seaver Street, Ruggles, Carbon Square, Washington, all of these are names after slave owners and under no circumstances should we just be comfortable knowing that the environment that we in fact exist in uh, has these names up there that our young people look at. Well, um, I applaud what you're doing, number one. Number two, it's my understanding right in Carbon Square, if, if you do the history on that one, the... Cobham Square is named after the pastor of that big white church many years ago. Um, and if, it's, if my understanding is correct, that either the pastor or somebody in his family had owned slaves, and I'm going to research it when you go back mm -hmm. to talking, and they had uh, one of the slaves attempted to kill the owner by poisoning the owner. owner. And the result of that is that they found out that the slave tried to do it, the person didn't die, and they hung the slave and left him up, left his body up there mm. to decompose all around this whole common square piece. So I, so now in my brain, I can't respect common square. I can't respect that name. And so I'm going to simply stop by every time people talk about the church is located in Common Square, I'm going to say we're located in Dorchester. I can't respect that name, and I'm going to tell the history. And, and slowly but surely, pour a little salt on the wound until we can actually mm -hmm. see the Common Square area renamed. And I don't understand how if when the white man says that I support the change of the name of Yawkey Way, back to uh, another name when the white man says it's okay then it's done but when black people say that they want a name change because of its history we have to go through all of this yeah, I'm exactly that's strange yeah, it is and you know but you know that that's the lay of the land and i know it's what's really interesting is that there are folk and let me just say that there are some folks in our community that are opposed to it you know there's an individual i won't say their name but I said, well, why would you be opposed to the name? And their response was, well, I grew up with that name. I says, okay, and what else? <laughs> they just looked at me. And <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, Pastor Wall, you know, they've got a new restaurant down there, Soleil is down there okay. at Nubian Square. And, in fact, we encourage folks to do the very thing you're talking about, uh, refer to it as Nubian Square. Right. And uh, they, So, anyhow, this person, they walk in, and I greeted them. And they looked at me and gave me a dirty look and walked away. <laughs> so I said, well, this is really interesting. But I think uh, 
what's really important is that in the in the beginning um in fact a lot of folks still ask this question well how did you arrive at the name nubian and so i explained that when we did our initial community meetings with boston praise radio helped us to, uh, to promote that uh, i had put out the name of Mita Wawak Fuller. Okay. And folks would say, well, who was that? And so, well, doc, she was Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller's, the first black mm -hmm. psychiatrist's wife. And, you know, I grew up outside of Boston. And so their family, so I grew up with their grandkids. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she was an internationally renowned sculptress, but really didn't get the, the, the uh, recognition that she should have gotten here in this country. Mm -hmm. And so my whole thing was about Mita Wawa Fuller Square. What was interesting was that in the meeting, folks were saying, you know, that's a good idea, Sadiqi, but what about David Walker Square? What about Malcolm? You know, so a bunch of folks had different suggestions about the, the, um, that what the name should be. And I said, you know what, <laughs> this is becoming an issue here that's slowing down the process. So I did some research, and at the next meeting I proposed I said, well, what about Nubian Square? So, mm. of course, the question was, well, what's that and who, who are the Nubians? And so, and what, what's really interesting is what the response from young folks is that we make it very clear that the uh, Nubian Empire was an African empire. And back in, uh, what was I think it's 1400 BC, and by uh, 5400 or something of that nature, it was the most powerful empire in the world. Mm hmm. An African empire. So, and we're not talking about just anything that's <laughs> minimal. I mean, we're talking about math, science, uh, right? You know, right across, right across the board, with education, what have you. And so, I said, basically, the meeting. I said, seemingly, that uh, the name Nubian would encompass all of us, mm -hmm. whether we from uh, Haiti. Or Harvard Square, you know that type of situation, right, right. as black and brown people. So that's how we came uh, to the whole level of agreement about that name because of the fact that folks were saying, "Well, um, did folks have issues with the name?" I said, "No, this was something where the community said, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, we agree and support the name that's proposed." And so uh, one of the offshoots we're hoping is that. Like we have a couple of the signs, well, we've got them placed strategic, strategically uh, throughout the square, but we also have a couple of signs up there by by the John D. O'Brien and Madison Park High School, mm -hmm. and so hopeful that the students are going to say, you know what, who, who are the Nubians, and they're going to do that type of research, mm -hmm. and they'll understand the fact that our history goes back a lot further than slavery, <laughs> that we're the original people, and that... Uh, our intent and hope that will, you know, enhance their pride in terms of who they are as people of, of African descent. So there's a lot of different positives uh, that can come out of this whole situation about about this name team that, that folks are trying to minimize. We have uh, Walika Bradley saying hi, Siddiqui, and Jose, and Matthew, and Kenneth, and Joseph, and Logan, and Leslie, and Louise. Warren are all on Facebook Live, and they're watching this, and we're glad to have them with us today. If you want to call in, our telephone number is 617-282-0685, 617-282-0685. If you had a meeting downtown in, in City Hall, what would be the focus? How would you set it up? Well, basically what, what we're proposing is that and that's really important because of the fact that ultimately we have to go before the Public Improvement Commission okay. that makes the final decision. Okay. So the scenario that we envision is that uh, we would like to uh, have that type of hearing downtown where folks can actually come and testify yep. as to how they feel about the proposed name change. So what's really interesting, even we know, that, you know, even though it's minimal, we know there's some folks who oppose. And, and but it, it's going to be interesting to see would will anybody show up and, 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 and come down publicly. and say well, <laughs> right and talk right. about why well, they want to keep How a slave gonna, name right <laughs> right I, I I think if you can line up the men and women that you want to speak just line them yep. up and and the really powerful statements that they've written out that they can read it's going to make others who might come down or be plants mm -hmm. of the city uh, make them look like 
what they are traitors contradictions yes. right mm-hmm. I, uh, because it's it's time for us to fight for the things that we want and for the things that we believe in and we're we're we're, we're really passive in this town and the only resurgence of life that i've seen is what what you're doing what kevin peterson's doing with Faneuil hall and this past election when, when mm. you know, um, black people made a decision to develop a coalition with some conservative whites and they uh, elected new people to the state house and, and Ayanna Presley going to Congress. So, I mean, that has renewed something in me as it relates to what we can do. That's the key. When we want to see a change. Mm. Because hearing that politicians knocked on 4,000, 5,000, uh, Ten thousand doors. Their team. Uh, that's that's significant groundwork. And obviously, if you had that kind of groundwork in in, in changing Nubian Square, th- that would again excite the base and get mm-hmm. people really uh, excited about this. Right. And you know, our whole piece is taking pride in that name and feeling like there's some ownership. Right. Because we like to see, you know, a lot more of our businesses down there uh, at Nubian Square. Right. And I re- reiterate once again, like, uh, well, let me just say hello to Walik because that's that's uh, Dr. Bradley's daughter, and she grew, up, she and her sister grew up uh, with my daughter, so <laughs> they were like family. So that's uh, amazing because uh, Walika has been contacting the radio station. She's been sending us some notes. We I won't talk about what she was saying, but uh, we might actually find ourselves developing a a relationship uh, with her. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take a break because I'd like to get it. I'd like to get thirty more minutes into this. If you can stay, can you stay, or do uh, you have to run out? Well, yeah, the only I have to get re- um, ready because I I'm supposed, to get, I'm supposed to get married this evening. So you get married this evening. Yeah, right. <laughs> Everybody laughs when I say that. You know, <laughs> you truly get married this evening. No, no you know I'm joking. Oh, 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 I was going to say good because <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard the word about this. Uh, so in the middle in, and in the middle of this campaign how can you afford to, to do that okay uh let's we're gonna uh take a little break here and um st- station id we have to go off facebook live when we do that and uh, i'll be right black as Sadiki always says when he's broadcasting with us 